you just did a masterful job of conveying the exact tone that we were going for when we wrote these books. Uh, you really got the balance of the of the humor and the message and everything, and, and tied that together. And uh, you know, Darren would uh, would send me some samples of some people he was listening to, and it was just like absolutely no, no, no. And as soon as we heard you, it was just like this is a great fit. We listened a little more. We're like, this is the guy. This is the guy. He gets it, and we just knew it immediately. And uh, you really did a fantastic job uh, with the reads on this book. So I would also tell people, don't just read for the content. It's a, it's a great listen. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? Nine minutes every Monday is all it takes to go from a manager to a leader. Let me tell you how my first nine minutes play out most Mondays. Arrive five minutes late. Only four minutes left. Immediately take my jacket off. Throw it over the chair and roll up my sleeves like I've been working for a while. Then I walk by the VP's office to make sure he knows I'm there and say, I already drank the first pot of coffee. Gonna make a new one. Can I get you a cup? This way he knows I'm there, doesn't think I was late, and I'm offering a nice cup of joe. Three minutes left. Check personal email. Check Facebook. Lean back in my chair and with a huge sigh... Run my fingers through my hair while quietly mouthing the words, Here we go again. One minute left. Open work email. Decide I should go to the bathroom and read social media. That coffee hits you quick. Turn on in-meeting auto-reply. While author James Robbins suggests my first nine minutes on Monday could use some slight tweaks, this is a good book. I like it. Brian, uh, welcome to the to the video cast. How are you? I'm fantastic, Graham. Thank you so much for having me. And this is interesting. Like usually when I narrate an audio book, I don't get to meet and chat to the creator of the audio book until after it's finished and you know we're, we're talking about the book. And, and up until then it's just been emails backward and forward as you know as there's things that need tweaking or changing or whatever along the way which is you know how things work but i've not even been dealing with you i've been dealing with with darren tanner so first of all just tell us about you and darren how does it work how are you involved what's the deal there absolutely so uh, darren and i have a friendship that goes back about 20 years and um, he, he's a fantastic guy. And he came to me uh, a couple of years ago with a fantastic idea, uh, which was that we, after, we, we actually met when we were 20 years ago waiting tables at a restaurant. And uh, I quickly got into management there. And that took me into management in uh, wine sales. And, and I spent a lot of time in management. He got into uh, medical supply sales after a little stint in wine sales as well. And he does uh, medical supplies. He's in management there. And so we spent a lot of time in management. And we uh, would talk about the, all the books, all the leadership books and the professional development books that you've got to read. And he came to me a couple of years ago and he said, I've got a great idea. I, I just can't read. I don't, no one has time to read all these books. What if we did a, a summary of these books? Um, but the difference is, is that ours would be funny. And uh, <laughs> he said, Brian, I'm, I'm, I'm a painfully, painfully unfunny man. I, 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 it, it, it's, it, I'm not funny at all. It affects my, my marriage. It affects my relationship with my kids. When people talk to me, they don't have fun, but you're funny, you're funny. And, uh, so can you, you know, help me write these? And, um, so I said, yeah, you know, well, give me a bunch of cash and I'll, I'll, I'll punch them up for you. So yeah, he sent me a, a $20 bill and, uh, we got to write them. <laughs> and, uh, so we, <laughs> we, we have, we have a lot of fun with them. Uh, and, uh, but, at the end of the day, we know that these books, they're great books. I'm not disparaging. We love the books. that we, They're important books. And we've read a lot of, we've read a lot of type books of this type. Obviously, we've read the, the entirety of the books that we, we summarize. But the, a lot of them boil down to just a few talking points. Yeah. And so we just thought, well, why don't we capture those and get rid of some of the fluff and also make it fun to read? So that's, yeah. that's a long-winded answer to the, the history of our friendship and, uh, and how we got into these books. Because I know when I approached it and like they were, you know, for, for anyone who doesn't know, it's probably one of the most famous business books is probably The Seven Habits. It's the only it's the only one of the series that actually read the book, actually, which was The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by by Dr. Stephen Covey. And I thought, oh, they're going to rip these books to shreds 
but you don't. There's, there's a tremendous respect for the original work as well as, because they're not, in some ways that they use parody to, to, to highlight some of the points, but it, often it's almost like you're making fun of the way you interpreted the book rather than yeah. the book itself. And I thought that was very clever, actually quite classy as well. It would almost be yeah. easier to just rip the books to shreds. But you also boil it down in a lot of them to the real world, the real corporate world. Uh, and, you know, because a lot of the books, they, the motivational books, they come up with an image of the perfect scenario for the perfect business, the perfect corporation, perfect structure. And we all know that there are losers and deadbeats and freeloaders and, and everything in there. And and your books, every one of them at some point exposes that and makes it suddenly very real. And I and I really like that. So your background is sales, but have you must have done some comedy writing before. Yes, that's right. So so I have a background in uh, improv comedy. I did, I, uh, did improv at Second City in Chicago. Um, and uh, which, for those that don't know, uh, that's where a lot of like the Saturday Night Live cast and crew come from, from that training center. Now, I was never at the I never had Lauren Michaels from Saturday Night Live, you know, knocking down my door. But that was the world that I lived in and did some stand up and did a lot of comedy writing. Um, so that, it was a nice marriage there. And, and thank you for the way that you've summarized our summaries in that uh, yeah, that was it was very intentional. And from the beginning, we knew we did not want to disparage the books or the authors. We genuinely yeah. enjoy these books and find them useful and, and purposeful uh, and meaningful to, for people that want to become better leaders or develop themselves professionally or personally. Um, but we also recognize that exactly as you say, that they're, uh, they always paint a best, best case scenario <laughs> and they're long. Uh, you yeah. know, I have to read these types of books in the morning or else I get through about two pages before I'm woken up by the book hitting me in the face if I try to read at night or in bed. Um, and so we just thought there's a great opportunity here to uh, to bring humor, but to still keep the core concept of the book, which is that, that we respect what, what's being said in the books. Um, we're just making it easier. So that's why we use, that's why we kept them short. And that's why we use uh, comedy and um, to make it that much more engaging. So, yeah, I've used yeah. a little comedy again. Dar Darren, painfully unfunny, painfully, painfully unfunny, Darren Tanner. But um, but I, hopefully I was able to bring a little bit of comedy to it. So how much of his input was in there? Was because there's a there's a there's a fo I hate to, to use the the phrase formula, but there's a, a structure is probably a better way. You know, you you structure them. You have an intro, and then towards the end, you have what to say at a cocktail party, which is like yeah. the real boiled down version, and it's the interpretation from the whole book. And then you know, there's a there's an it starts with an insult and it ends with an insult. It seems as well. It says written by the guy who I don't want to give too many of them away, but you know, one yeah. example might be um, uh, this book. You know, written by the guy who. It, the guy in the office who refers to himself in the third person and you know things like that. and then at the very end it says if you enjoyed this book you know but and if you didn't enjoy this book you're a humorless you know whatever um yeah. wh wh whose idea was that to follow that same structure in each one uh mostly darren's so okay uh, and it, it was it, darren had the idea too uh that it should be we should end this with what to say at a cocktail party because part of the the purpose of these books was that a lot of times people are um, either forced to read these books, like they're in management and their upper managers will say, hey, I want you to read this book. Or it's the, it's a little bit of a badge of honor that, oh, yeah, I've read Five Dysfunctions of a Team. I know that. I've, I've read The One Minute Manager. I've read, uh, you know, Seven Habits. Um, and then, but if anybody gets called out on it, you know, it's like, I, well, well, what are the seven habits? I don't know. So we're just like, this is how you just make it look in a couple easy sentences. Like, you know, what you like, you read the book and you know, you know, uh, what to say about it. You've summarized it, uh, you know, easily or digested it. So, um, so that was Darren's while he's painfully unfunny. He's a brilliant man. And it was his idea to, um, uh, to, to make it, uh, practical and useful. Yeah, they are great, and you do you do go through it at quite a pace. Uh, if anyone's thinking of downloading one of these audio books, and you should, I think if just just pick one and just uh, and and then if you like that, then go for one of the others. I think we've done ten now. As we record yeah. this, I think seven or eight of them are on sale. They're not all on sale yet. They've got to go through the. The, the process, yeah. the, the audible approval process, which takes like 10 days, but they'll all, by the time you're watching this, probably all, the whole 10 that we've done so far are out there. But, yeah. um, Graham, can I just say too, that, uh, you know, your read of these really 
it, it really brings out the humor and brings out what we were going for in these books. Um, you got it. You know, you understood like and, and just even what you're saying here, you really understood the, that balance of that. They're, they're meant to to show respect for the 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 author, but it's supposed to be funny, too. And you just did a masterful job of conveying the exact tone that we were going for when we wrote these books. Uh, you really got the balance of the of the humor and the message and everything and, and tied that together. And, uh, you know, Darren would uh, would send me some samples of some people he was listening to. And it was just like, absolutely. No, no, no. And as soon as we heard you, it was just like, this is a great fit. We listened a little more we're like this is the guy. This is the guy. He gets it. And we just knew it immediately. And uh, you really did a fantastic job uh, with the reads on this book. So I would also tell people, don't just read for the content. It's a it's a great listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. That uh, that yeah. really has made my day. You saying that I'm glad because when I did the audition, I think from memory, I think the often auditions are very specific on what they want. And I don't think yours was from from what I, I think it's just something like not really sure what I'm looking for. And like usually when you hear that, you think, well, how am I ever going to please this guy? But it, it said like, I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. I think it said, maybe I want Cockney, but I don't know. And that, but when I read the copy... I heard the voice I should do because it's in there for me. I, I it, it jumped out at me. It, to me, and I don't know whether these are your influences coming from comedy, whether these are two of your comedic influences. To me, it was like Monty Python meets The Office. Yes. <laughs> That's where I went. Is, 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 is that perhaps where some of the influence came from? A hundred percent. I'm a I'm a huge fan of the, the Monty Python and of that show. Not just the uh, American Office, which is the most popular one here, but the Ricky Gervais version as well. Um, so we absolutely drew from that. Uh, you know, I, I was in the comedy world for a long time. I'm a, I was always a huge fan of like the Kids in the Hall as well. I don't know if people are familiar with that. I heard about that one. I haven't seen. That was a Canadian show. Yeah. Is that right? It's a, yeah. It was a Canadian one. Yeah. And yeah. There's another co comedy troupe I used to love called The State. And what, what I liked about uh, Monty Python, what I loved about Kids in the Hall, and what I loved about The State is they were absurd. And but the absurdity came from sort of very real life things and then they just you know sort of amplified it and explored it and that's something i would do on the improv stage as well um and so we brought out a lot of this here is uh, a lot of our i mean as you as you so rightly pointed out we did make it the situations a little bit more realistic like it wasn't like in these books where the examples are always the absolute best case scenario a lot of times in our our books the the protagonists, if you will, fail or, or whatnot. Um, but we do that. Or they, or they sleep with really someone they shouldn't or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah they're, they're not always good people. <laughs> no. and, and that's the absurdity. So that, so we, we like to take something where, you know, maybe you'd have someone that you work with or a manager that's just not perfect and we really blow it out of proportion and make that where sometimes they're just terrible people or, you know, or whatnot. But it helps to bring comedy. It helps to reinforce the point sometimes and uh, – but yeah, th those are those are big influences for for us for sure. And whereabouts are you in the states? Uh, we're in Colorado. Yeah, and you're both in Colorado. Yep, we're about thirty minutes from each other. So whereabouts? I've only I've only been once, so this is a real long shot. Yep, I'm in Boulder, uh, along the Front Range, right up in the foothills, and Darren is uh, about thirty minutes south of me, uh, down in Lakewood. Right, so, because you know, I we, had. We, um, I I had a bad experience. It's a funny experience looking back, but at the time it was hell in uh, in uh, Denver. Um, yeah. I was a morning show guy on a radio station here, and I went to a, th a convention in Denver. They have them every year called Morning Show Boot Camp, and they're great events. And, and all of the top breakfast shows or morning shows from the US go to this morning show boot camp. And this one this year was in Denver. And I'd started trying my hand at stand-up comedy, which <laughs> I gave up. And yeah. one of the reasons is, so I got in touch with a comedy club in Denver and, you know, gave them a bit of the flannel and said, you know, I've been doing this in the UK. And I'd done a little bit, but not enough. Uh, yeah. Not enough to take that on. And, uh, 
And I went out as I think I was second or third on in the night. <laughs> and I walked off to my own footsteps. I mean, it, none of it worked. Um, and it was all my fault. And uh, I was with uh, I was with Gene, who was one half of Gene and Julie, who were a morning show, who at the time I think were in Dallas. And uh, I got off. I said, what do you think? And he said, let's go. Because <laughs> it was like, but this place, honestly, this, this place, it was like a haircut museum i mean there were mullets and you know it was it was next door to a gun shop and it (laughs) it was not in a nice part of town and uh, that's my only experience of denver but i met some really nice people there and i had not not in that club obviously but yeah Yeah. but uh, i i I don't colorado doesn't strike me as a big as a big comedy state you know you mentioned chicago and second city and then of course san francisco had like robin williams and people like that Obviously, yep. there's Los Angeles, New York, with all the the comedy store and 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 uh, Catch a Rising Star, and all those really famous comedy clubs. So, yeah. do do you still find an outlet for comedy in Colorado for yourself? I don't perform anymore. I performed okay. around not just Chicago, but around Michigan. Uh, I used to help, uh, you know, co-host an improv festival, um, and had done a little bit of stand up, but a lot more improv, uh, improv and stage uh, sketch comedy. Um, yeah good on you for for trying i mean of the th- of those three comedy art forms of stand up improv and sketch stand up's the hardest by a million right. miles okay. it, it's such a it's such a honed craft that you have to just spend years to uh, and and i just didn't put the time in to, to hone the craft <laughs> i i enjoyed the the team aspect of sketch and, and improv a lot more anyway so i did a lot more of that but no now it's more in the writing i'm i'm old my kids don't think i'm funny and your, your uh, kids don't I, think you're funny no, uh, I'm I'm lame to them. I'm sure. How old are your kids? Well, so my 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 daughter's 13, and then uh, Darren's got a 12 year old, and so, um, but uh, so are we got the families together a lot too, and they the you know his kid, my kid, they roll our eyes. I mean, they're right with Darren. You know, I just cannot emphasize this enough. He's just horrifically <laughs> unfunny, and I wish he could be here. You'd agree with everything that I'm saying right now, and. Um, and the, it, it's it's sobering how unfunny he is. But when my wife and I and he and his wife get together, uh, the three of the four of us have a great time and we put up with Darren. And, but he's got good ideas. And uh, yeah. this was one of them. So, yeah, I think I think these books I, I can see now. Now you're explaining it, how, you know, the comedy and, and Darren's got the idea uh, and the structure of it, because yeah. as a narrator, what I enjoyed the most, I think, about them was that because I really didn't do them as me. I did them as a, as an exaggerated, slightly pompous, really, character yeah, that, 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 that does them. And, and that was a lot of fun. And I, I loved the way that you'd written in, because it, at the very beginning of each one with the intro, it, it says, you know, written by the guy in the office. And then there's a, there's a joke about the guy that everybody knows in the office. One of these, <laughs> got these character traits that are not appealing. And then it yeah. follows it up with narrated by the incomparable Graham Mack. And of course, I couldn't, there's no way I could say that as me. But as this character, you know, narrated by the incomparable, like this guy thinks he's an actor, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, someone who takes takes himself way too seriously not saying that darren takes himself way too seriously but i can see that the more serious part of the character that narrates the audio books could have yeah. come from a more serious place than a comedic place yeah, would you yeah. agree or am i overthinking that there yeah no no i i, I think that uh, i think you've got it right i think that's what he, that he and i bring to it um you know he, he 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 had he had the structure he had the idea for this and um he, so he is also still very much in the management world. I mean, a lot of these stories just come from what we saw. You know, I was in management for a very long time in upper management. He's in upper management and we were, we've both been in very, very lower management as well. So we, we've seen all these things play out, which is funny. And we read these books along the way and, you know, it's giving you these best case scenarios and it's telling you how to react. And then you go to work and it's like, this isn't how this is playing out at all. <laughs> and again, we're not disparaging the books because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of truth in there. Um, yeah. But, you know, you take a book like Crucial Conversations and it shows you how to tone down a really heated conversation. And we even make a joke in the book about like, all you have to do is remember the 22 steps that they lay out <laughs> while you're in the middle of a highly intensive conversation. It's like, <laughs> nobody's going to do that. Yeah. Um, so that's not to say that these aren't important steps and that the, the lessons in these books aren't important. But uh, my God, is it difficult to apply them in real time sometimes when you're when you're just dealing with reality. 
Um, yeah. So we've seen we've seen these play out, and Darren's still very much in that world. So he's uh, you know he he's uh, in a, in a world where he he has to be a little more uh, drier and formulaic in the way that he approaches what he does. And uh, I, I'm in a different space as I, you know as I mentioned uh, before the call started in the video and uh, the creative world. And um, so um, I get to still pursue creative pursuits and, and humorous pursuits just without doing it on stage anymore. Now I film the people that do it on stage. Um, so uh, that's how those worlds kind of came together. But, you know, like I said, despite his uh, his incredibly terrible sense of humor, he's a brilliant man. So what is it you do? What is the uh, the, the thing outside of, of the comedy writing then exactly? I have a production company. Right, so I do, see. Mm -hmm, so I'll do a live events. I'll do produce videos um, and, and um, you know, put together any anything with a, you know social media anything with audio visual we work with uh, with clients to help them in, increase their bottom line through um through audio and video production and uh and darren is is big time at a, a, a medical supply company so he's traveling the globe selling important products to physicians that are saving lives so yeah uh, he's sounds like he's got a real job and a responsibility He's got a real job. Yeah, it's like I, I'll, I like I said, he's much, much, much more intelligent than me. You know, he's the. <laughs> so how did you get going in in the video production? Do you work for yourself, or is it? Are you working for a, a company? You, is your company? It's, it's, it's my own. I've had my own thing for about thirteen years. Great. Got, so you're I living the dream. Field. I was uh, I was a, a vice president of a distribution company, and uh, I I just wanted to get out of that world and. Um, I wanted to do my own thing. And I, that's when I was some, doing some creative and uh, comedic stuff. And I just thought this was more of an outlet to embrace that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But what a Darren's great grounding in it, though. TPS reports. What's that? I said, Darren's still filling out TPS reports. What's TPS <laughs> reports? What's that? It's a joke from uh, Office Space. So if, if you've ever seen the movie Office Space. <laughs> no, I haven't. I'll have to track it down. I will. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll have to track it down. Yeah. We drew some um, comedy from, or some inspiration from that as well. It's a movie that makes fun of sort of the mundane day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life of, of being in the corporate environment. Yeah. I mean, I worked, I, I ran a few radio stations and you'd think radio being a creative medium would be immune to that kind of bullshit and you're not you know because we were owned by a we were owned by a network i think it wasn't a big network i think there were 35 radio stations at the time and i was the program director of one of them they were all over britain and at every once a week you had to go on this conference call with all the other but it was basically just someone at the head office and they they do like they talk about instead of just saying well here's what you need to know about you know this week or something that's going on it'd be like they'd call it an information download you know it's like <laughs> what? you know i had to mute the phone because otherwise they would have they would have heard me you know because yeah uh, and the thing was i was at that station i was the pro i was program director but i was also the breakfast show co-host so i would come off i just had four hours of telling fart jokes and now i've got to sit in an office and listen to an information download you know my head's not in the right place for that but uh, i wish i'd heard some of the a comedic summary of series back then because i could have used a lot of it yeah yeah the so, first so are job you, I ever had right out of so, college i got fired for joking around too much on the job i was never going to be cut out for uh for having a corporate nine to five job you know, it's a certain so. type of type of person that can click into that and and go yeah, yeah this this makes a lot of sense instead of going yeah. like you're taking this way too seriously you've yeah. you've 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 come up with acronyms and systems and processes to just do normal stuff you know and it, yeah. it, and as far as i was concerned radio was basically just talking to people and they yeah. turned it into this science <laughs> but, yeah. yeah but i think all but, businesses go through that yeah well i think it's what makes these books work because there we, there's a lot of good and you've got to play the game and you've got to know you know people that want to excel at management need to know this content and they need to be good at this content but we also see the humor in it we see that uh, the reality of it and uh, so again to you know to 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 reinforce what you were saying before in no way do we just tear these books down no. or cut them at all these are no. great books we love these and, books and especially and, uh, the ones that touch on leadership and the principles of being a good leader 
You yeah. don't actually take those down, you know, um, Leaders Eat Last and, you know, books like that. You, you, they, there are some, there's some solid stuff in those books that you can't argue with. Um, and Simon you don't, you don't take yeah. them on. You just, you just make some of the situations a bit more real world than, than the ones that are actually in the, in the motivational yeah. and leadership books. It's great. Well, so, so the then are you, you and, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, so. When when I do the books, it says, you know, and I have to give the credit, it's it's credited as Tobo Leadership. So is that you and Darren? Yeah, so uh, uh, D Darren's vision from the get-go, originally, he wanted to do just one big book that was going to be a compilation. of, and, and at some point, we still might take all these and, and, and do that in some capacity. Um, so his idea was that this it was going to be the only book on leadership you'll ever need. Because there's all the others are in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The only book on leadership, so Tobo Leadership, um, and uh, that's how that name came about. Uh, ironically, we have <laughs> ten books now, right? <laughs> you know, and they're but they're all small. So you know, but that, that's that's where that name came from. Is this compilation of uh, these summaries so that you could just read this one book and become you know understand all these concepts and get them in smaller, more digestible pieces. Um, so, yeah, at some point, that still may be the goal is just take everything that you've read from us and make it into one longer thing or take the things we've written and make it into one physical book. I, I don't know. But right now we're going to, you know, we're doing this and enjoying this. Well, you can do it with the audio book because I've done it before when I've done a series of books for people yeah. and then they 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 bundle them if you know what I mean. They call it a bundle and they take each individual yeah. book and I just produce them up in the right order with credits at the beginning and the end of each one. And that means the people who download a book on, on Audible or Amazon can uh, get all the books in one go in one package at a slightly discounted rate, but it's good for the rights holders because you get your 40% uh, cut, but you get 40% of a bigger Instead yeah. of them paying, I don't know. What, do you know what they sell them for on Amazon and and Audible? The the individual books. I want to say like two ninety nine or one. It's because they're, they're quite short. I think they're around about twenty yeah. minutes each. Some of them a little yeah. bit longer. Yeah. Some of them a little bit shorter, which is great if you've got a twenty minute commute or you want to get yeah. through a couple of them. They are really good to get hold of. You don't have to really get into them because comedy's like that. I think that's why we have half hour sitcoms and one hour dramas. Yeah, yeah I think that's the reason why is because comedy yeah. it's got to be a, just for some reason is is a, is a little bit shorter and a lot of people fail sometimes making comedic movies because they've got to get that comic premise to they've got to stretch it to to 90 minutes or, or 87 minutes or whatever it is yeah but you could do that you could you can bundle them up and um that's that's easy enough to done to do and it'd be particularly easy with these i think it'd work with these but i'm not trying to pitch you to do that but uh yeah. if you want to think about it because then you can sell them for like you know 20 dollars for the whole batch and yeah. uh and you get a you get you get a bigger piece of the action yeah, yeah. which leads me I nicely into the plan yeah, if you if you'd like to check out one of these audio books, and you know, really, they're not that expensive because they are quite short. And Audible price them that way. The shorter books are a lot cheaper. All the links to all the books that are on sale are in the. If you go to the blurb down there and you click on them, it'll take you straight to a link. So if you want to get one of them, so what's next for you, Brian and and Darren? You know, we want to see how this goes. Ultimately, we'd like to do a lot more of these. Uh, we're we're we have, we're starting a, in a, a social media presence. So, um, if I can if I can pitch that, if people want to yeah. go to us on Instagram, it's Tobo T O B O dot leadership. That's our you know at Tobo dot leadership. That's our Instagram handle, and we're just starting to post there. Um, at some point, we're going to be doing uh, a couple uh, little you know raffles and some giveaways there. But part of what we're doing there is we're just trying to see what people are thinking of the books and just mining for what if, what else would people like to see. You know, some of the books we've um, done the summaries of are classics, but they're older. You know, I mean, yeah. Seven Habits and One Minute Manager. I had to read One Minute Manager when I was 21 when I first got into management, <laughs> and uh, you know. That, that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> so there's, you know, great leadership books come out all the time and we've got some that are more recent, but I think we'd like to get, just kind of see what's going, you know, what, what people are reading and, 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 um, and into right now. And then maybe we start doing some more recent stuff as well. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, I'd love to be a part of doing more of them. They are yeah. a joy to narrate and it's good fun 
meeting you at last. I say at last, but, but this is actually the first time we've interacted in any way. Normally, yeah. uh, um, I interact with the uh, the authors and the rights holders uh, via email as we go through the process of making the audio book. But I was interacting with Darren the whole way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, great to see you. And if you're ever in yeah. the UK, come and look me up and uh, we'll go out and... Uh, we might be able to go to a football match, especially if Liverpool well, are playing Chelsea, which are our we'll go two watch teams. Liverpool Chelsea match, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Darren would love that. He's a huge soccer or football fan. So, uh, who's yeah. his team? His team is uh, Brighton. Brighton and Hove Albion. How did he get? How are they his team? I don't know. I I asked him about it once, but he's just so painfully unfunny that I lost interest halfway through his explanation. So, okay, uh, that's his. Team. You'll have yeah, to. Yeah, see, him. you see, I was born into a family of Liverpool fans, so that's. <laughs> but but he had the choice of any team, <laughs> and he chose Brighton and Hove Albion. But I don't know. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. Hey, Brian, good to see you. Thank you very much once again for choosing me as your narrator for a comic yeah. summary of, and they're all kinds of. Every one of them is called a comic summary of, and it'll be a famous leadership book that if you haven't read, you've at least heard of, and they do condemn down the ideas in the books they're very respectful to the books but they are very very funny books as well and there's a lots lots of twists in there and some good insults as well and uh thank you once again and continued success thank you and you read them masterfully so thank you for such a great job there and thanks for having me on today